Okay, this is uh, a little bit more information about exposure reciprocity. Reciprocity just means that as you change one thing, you change something else. So this is the relationship, it's another way of looking at the relationship between f-stops and shutter speeds. So let us start out with shutter speed. That is clearly how long is the lens going to be open. With shutter speeds, it's very obvious that if I go from a 1 to 50th of a second to a 1 500th, I'm going to be letting in half as much light. If I go from a 2 50th to a 1 25th, I'm letting in twice as much light. This is twice as long as that. This is half as long as that. Okay, and that relationship holds true all the way. If I go this direction, it's half as much light. If I go this direction, it's twice as much light. Um, okay, now the other thing that happens with this is motion blur. As I go to a faster shutter speed, clearly there's going to be less opportunity for there to be motion blur. As I go to a longer exposure, there's more opportunity for motion blur. And I should point out that motion blur can be from moving subjects in the photo, and it can also be from a moving photographer or camera. Okay, so now let's look at the other half of this, which is the aperture. The f-stop is just a number that describes the size of the aperture. For example, if this is a representation of the size of the opening at f2.8, here's f4, the next f-stop. If we go from this f-stop and close down to this one, we're letting in half as much light. The next one is 5.6, that's half as much light again. 8, half as much light, 11. 16, 22. As I go this direction, I'm letting in half as much light. As if I go this direction, I'm letting in twice as much light as I go from one f-stop to the next one. So you start to see that there's a relationship that is the same. The important thing about f-stop is it's calculated by a formula. And if I have my lens on my Nikon set for f8, and you're somewhere else with a Canon set for f8, this opening has to let in the same amount of light. If it doesn't, the whole system falls apart. So it's a formula that takes into account the diameter of the lens barrel and various sundry other things to give us a number that is consistent from one lens to another. Okay, now with, uh, with f-stops, the thing that we control is the depth of field. As we go to a bigger opening, which is a smaller F number, we get less depth of field. That area that we focused on gets to be a narrower area. If we go to smaller apertures, which would be a larger F number, we are increasing the depth of field. So that's the important thing here. Now, uh, another way that we could that we could look at this is um, this way. Imagine if you had, it's really clear if you look at it this way, imagine if you had a bucket under a faucet. If I open up the aperture of this faucet so that the water is pouring in, clearly it's not going to take very long to fill the bucket right up to the top. Whereas if I close this aperture down so less water is flowing, I have to have the faucet turned on a longer period of time in order to fill the bucket. So the deal here is imagine a perfectly full bucket equals a perfect exposure. Okay, So as we change one, we need to change the other to keep the bucket getting perfectly full. Now what that means is that when you're out here on the planet Earth, you have choices as a photographer. These relationships here, I should say, are just picked randomly. Uh, when you're out on the planet Earth, your lens meter in your camera will give you one optimal exposure. And you can try this experiment yourself. Like if I was outside and it told me that the, a good exposure for the, the sensitivity or the film speed I have my camera set for, what a good exposure is f8 at a 125th, you could say, well, what's going to happen if I shut down to f11? And it will then tell you 
that a sixtieth of a second is the shutter speed you should use. You can try this yourself and prove it. This is a very, very important concept in photography because it's the thing that allows you to be the photographer. It allows you to make choices. If you always had your camera on uh, an automatic exposure setting, every time you step out of your house at noon on a sunny day, it's always going to give you the same f-stop and shutter speed combination, which is pretty boring. So this is for you to have more control. It's pretty simple, but you just have to think about it a little while to make it a part of your photography.